Welcome back to Thrive with Nicole. I'm your host, Nicole Ivins. And this episode, I'm going to share with you a personal experience. So my experience with anxiety as a HSP. So for those of you that don't know what a HSP is, highly sensitive person. In this article, I'm also going to share with you my experience uh, when I took an antidepressant. Um, Again, as a sensitive person, to just share with you um, my very own experience about that. So, you know, anxiety as a HSP or a highly sensitive person, it feels different. And since the age of 11, you know, I experienced anxiety and I was diagnosed around 21 with generalized anxiety disorder. And, you know, I spent a good 10 years with debilitating panic attacks. And this really caused me to, you know, not be able to work uh, for a few years as well. And during this time, I was coping, you know, with my generalized anxiety disorder on my own with no support because, you know, back then, showing my age here, (laughs) there wasn't much known about anxiety as there is today. So over the years through my own experiences and training, I learned to manage my symptoms whilst I was working on the core reasons for my disorder. So my core reasons uh, for my anxiety. And, you know, I came a time where you know I made the decision to talk to my doctors about my anxiety as a HSP and he described uh, prescribed sorry an antidepressant for me so in this episode I really want to share with you my experience with an antidepressant um, to support me with my anxiety as a HSP now as a sensitive person you may be the same There aren't very many medicines I can take that don't affect my body in a negative way. And the antidepressant wasn't any different. But, you know, I knew this. I knew this is what was going to happen. So knowing this, I committed to staying the course and getting through the side effects over the first three weeks. Because I was told, you know, the first three weeks are going to be the roughest. Just get through those first three weeks and then you're going to start to feel better. So, you know, the side effects for me really consisted of high levels of anxiety crazy right (laughs) a dry mouth uh, exhaustion loss of interest in food and loss of sensation below the waist if you get my drift (laughs) most of the side effects went away except for the loss of sensation below the waist and that never returned whilst I was on the medication but you know I made the choice to accept this side effect if it meant that my anxiety levels as a HSP were managed And I stayed on the medication for 10 weeks. You know, I started to notice, um, you know, the side effects that I wasn't aware of, actually. There were some side effects I wasn't necessarily aware of. And my husband mentioned that I hadn't really been myself and he hadn't seen me smile for a while. You know, the beach, you know, if you've been following me for a while, you know, the beach is my place. It's a place where, you know, I, I feel very calm, very grounded but it no longer was providing me with that deep joy and that serenity that it once had. It was just not really evoking anything in me. And, you know, looking outside at nature didn't evoke anything in me either. And emotional shows on TV also didn't evoke anything. Now, if you're like me, you know, a sensitive person, an empath, we feel a lot, don't we? So you can imagine going from feeling everything to going to apparently feeling nothing. So this is where I really started to understand the cost of this medication for me. I wasn't feeling, you know, and (laughs) like I said, as a sensitive person, as an empath, I don't know if that's okay. So, you know, unbeknown to me, I was numb. I wasn't feeling everything like I had my whole life as a highly sensitive soul and an empath. And, you know, I guess that is the idea of the medication. But for me, that was too high of a cost. Whilst feeling everything played a part in my anxiety as a HSP, it is part of my gift as a highly sensitive soul. You know, my sole purpose as an empath is to be able to feel and have sensitivity to things that other people may not. And whilst this can be challenging, it is not something I am willing to give up. So my third full day off the medication, I saw my tears come back. And I realized and I said to myself, wow, you haven't cried for 10 weeks. And to me, this wasn't okay. I'm a crier, okay? Hands up, cry too, I'm a crier. (laughs) I have no shame in that. 
<laughs> and if you've been a private client of mine, you will know that. You will know that I teach my clients all the time how tears are good. Crying is healing. So whilst emotions and feelings can be uncomfortable, absolutely, they are not to be feared or suppressed, in my opinion. That's my own personal experience and what it is that I teach my clients. So, you know, if we allow them to flow through, they can be our friends. You know, and as I was, you know, writing the blog for this for this episode, you know, the scene from Finding Nemo floated into my mind. And those of you that got kids, you will understand this as well. Fish are friends, not food. <laughs> Feelings are friends, not enemies. Okay, that's, a, I think, a good thing to remember. Feelings are friends, not enemies. So day six of being off the medication, I was feeling amazing, back to being myself, and I was so grateful. You know, I could feel again. Yay. <laughs> now, of course, this is not me telling you what to do with your medication. I want you to really understand this. This is me sharing my own personal experience with anxiety as a HSP and the effects of an antidepressant on my sensitive body. You know, and the, this experience really highlighted the importance of my work and how I support my clients, like I mentioned earlier. Finding the core and underlying reasons is always so much more powerful than addressing the symptom only. Now, of course, I acknowledge medications have a very important role in supporting people in their physical and mental well-being, absolutely. But I also know it is important to work on more than just the symptom and pulling back the layers and healing the cause. Now, I have to share a disclaimer with you here. I am not a medical professional. And I'm not recommending you change your medications in any way. Please, I have to say this, please speak to your doctor before considering changing or stopping any medications. This is not what this is about. This is just me sharing my own personal experience. So please see your doctor before you even think about making any adjustments to your medication. You know, so healing is the long game. It is. My clients hate that when I tell them that, but it is. It's not an overnight fix. It is the long game. And, you know, as I aforementioned, anxiety and depression medication most definitely have their place in supporting mental health. Absolutely. And they can absolutely have a place in your healing regime to address symptoms of declining mental health. And that is something, you know, I really wanted to address in this episode. You know, the medical model surrounds heavily the symptoms you are experiencing. You know, you go to the doctor, you share with what you've been experiencing, be, sorry, been experiencing, and for the most part, you may be prescribed some sort of medication to support you with that. Because whilst addressing your symptoms is very important, as we want to ensure, you know, you can experience some relief from those symptoms. That's why I've gone to the doctor, right? Or why you come to someone like me is you're really wanting to feel some relief from what it is you're experiencing. But deeper and long-term healing requires addressing the underlying core reason so whilst we want to be looking at the symptoms and providing you with some relief for those symptoms we also want to start to look at the core as well and that doesn't always happen within the medical model they don't have you know necessarily the time for that do they you know the doctor's appointments are like 15 minutes so you kind of in and out they don't have the time to start to really uncover okay why is this happening what is causing this for you that's why you want to like i talked about your healing regime have different prongs that you're really working with to really help you um, um, with that. So in my opinion, as a sensitive person, healing and understand the underlying core reason is paramount to your overall, overall well-being, sorry. <laughs> because, you know, for me and you know, a lot of my clients, anxiety as a HSP hits differently. It just does. Because as a highly sensitive person, anxiety just hits your system differently. You feel and experience it on many different levels. So, you know, if we think about the basic description of anxiety, and this comes from, you know, the dictionary. <laughs> Distress or uneasiness of mind caused by fear of danger or misfortune. So as we can see, you know, the very basic description tells us that anxiety is based in fear. But is anxiety as a HSP also based in fear? That's a question we want to ask. Now, could you be experiencing some anxiety that is caused by fear? Absolutely. You're human, right? <laughs> but that is not the whole story for you as a highly sensitive person. Anxiety as a HSP comes from many different places and for many different reasons. 
So as a highly sensitive person, your nervous system processes things differently. And there is actually scientific evidence that HSPs and empaths are thought to have hyper-responsive mirror neurons, deeply resonating with other people's feelings, emotions, energy, and experiences. And I'm sure if you're following me, you've probably experienced that too. Now, mirror neurons are triggered by outside events. So think about that. So you've got these hyper-responsive mirror neurons and mirror neurons are triggered by outside events. So by things that are happening outside of you and that, you know, it's causing you to feel and absorb the feelings of other people, not just in your little circle, but you know, with people that you interact with and come across with in the external world. So you think about that, that mirror effect that is happening as you know, you're walking past somebody in the supermarket. So you may be feeling, you know, their emotion, maybe they're anxious. Then all of a sudden you're anxious. You weren't anxious when you walked into the shop, but now you're all of a sudden anxious. What is that? That's that mirror neuron effect where you have picked up and they've reflected what they're feeling to you because you have a sensitive nervous system. I hope that makes sense for you. So because that is happening, you know, we've got anxiety coming from different places. We have a two pronged approach that is needed. And, you know, for anxiety as a HSP has two culprits, your inner world and your outer world. And as such, two approaches are also needed. So let's look at the first one. So the first one is for your inner world. So your inner world approach. So your inner world is affected by um, experiences and events you have endured in your life. So your sensitive nervous system adapts and learns through your experiences, responding in ways to keep you safe. And, you know, an easy way to understand this process is the fight, flight and freeze response. You know, most people know what that is. And you may find yourself more prone to one of those responses. So for me, it's flight. It's always been flight for me. (laughs) You frighten me and I'm kind of out of there. So, you know, there is a part of your brain called the amygdala. And it's referred to as the emotional center of your brain. And I like to refer to it as your inner smoke alarm. So when there is a perceived imminent threat, your inner smoke alarm will sound to alert you. Now, whilst there may not actually be, you know, a physical threat, your nervous system is responding from what it has learned from your past unhealed experiences. And the work here. So the work in your inner world is going to consist of essentially retraining your nervous system and helping it to adapt. Now, this is done through understanding, healing and addressing past experiences and events that you have endured. Now, the way in which I help my private clients um, is to heal their past events, experiences and traumas is with EFT tapping. So, you know, I actually have a free EFT tapping guide that I invite you to download. So I will pop a link um, below for you so that you can um, be able to to download that. And that actually comes uh, with the the tapping guide as well as uh, a few scripts. So we've got one for worry, one for overwhelm and one for self-sabotage. So that is free uh, for you to, to download. So as I said, I'll pop a link below wherever you are watching or listening to this. All right, so let's go to the second prong approach. So this is for our outer world. So the outer world approach. So the outer world can affect you through the feelings, emotions, and energy you are absorbing from those in the outer world. And as I mentioned, there is scientific evidence that HSPs and empaths are thought to have hyper-responsive mirror neurons. And the mirror neurons, remember, are triggered by outside events. So your work here is to understand how the outer world and the people in it are affecting you. And as you start to understand the effects of the outer world on your sensitivity, it gives you the opportunity to implement strategies to support your well-being. And I have something for you with this one as well. So I've got another free guide for you, and this one's called Seven Days to Zen. It's my self-care Bible. And it has, you know, all these different strategies for you that are really going to help you with what you're absorbing from the outside world. There's a lot of different strategies in there, seven different strategies that are really gonna help you to look after your sensitivity because as someone, you know, as a highly sensitive person or as an empath or maybe both, you know, we have to take care of ourselves in different ways. Our self-care has to be top notch and that's what this guide is gonna do for you. So it's really gonna help you to, to feel lighter and feel more energized. So again, I'm gonna pop a link of this for you um, below whatever it is here that you whether you're watching it or whether you're listening to it there'll be a link there for you to be able to download this free guide 
as well. So I really hope that, you know, sharing my personal experience will support you as a highly sensitive person and know there are different pronged ways of coming at your physical, mental, emotional and spiritual well-being. So I really trust that this has helped you. I want to thank you for joining me and I look forward to chatting with you again next time.